What do you think of when you hear about the Gulf? Lavish mansions, glittering skyscrapers, and luxury malls? Some of us think that of Mumbai here in India, but cities like Doha and Dubai are even more so. Lift the veil and you will find an invisible migrant workforce that helped build these cities. How many of you know someone working in the Gulf? Anyone? Yeah, we've got quite a few. Yes, quite a lot actually. Well, it's no surprise there are almost 9 million Indians working in the Gulf. In countries like Qatar and the United Arab Emirates, migrants make up around 90% of the population. For many migrant workers, from doctors to laborers, the Gulf provides opportunities for economic prosperity. But for far too many, such dreams can quickly turn into nightmares. In October 2015, a horrific video went viral. It showed Kasturi Murinathiram, a 56-year-old Indian domestic worker from Tamil Nadu, lying in a hospital in Saudi capital Riyadh with her right arm severed. I understood that they're going to harm me, so I told the lady that I don't need any money and just send me back to India. Then she told that to someone over the phone. Then she locked the door inside. I cried and asked her to open the door. She didn't open the door. Then she pushed me out and locked all the doors. Kasturi pleaded with the employer to return home to India. But when she refused, Kasturi tried to escape out of a window using a sari as a rope. But she fell and she lost consciousness. When she woke up, her entire right arm was missing. I met Kasturi's son and sister a month later. They described why Kasturi had migrated to Saudi Arabia in the first place. She was burdened with a loan of 2.5 million rupees that she had used to pay for her daughter's wedding costs. And on top of which, she was struggling to meet the costs of a sick husband, four children and seven grandchildren. So let's think about this. What led Kasturi to risk such an escape? Kasturi said that her employer confiscated her passport and then forced her to work 14 to 16 hours a day with no rest and no day off and withheld her salary. She finally tried to flee when she thought the family would physically harm her. There are hundreds of thousands of Indian domestic workers in the Gulf region from states like Kerala, Andhra Pradesh, and Tamil Nadu. For many, migrating is the only option that they have as a solution to their poverty. These brave women all leave with the same dream, to build a better life. As part of my work, I have interviewed hundreds of domestic workers in the Gulf region, and I am sorry to say that Kasturi's plight is not uncommon. In 2008, I began working for Amnesty International, where I was documenting human rights violations in Gulf states like Saudi Arabia. I received dozens of cases of families of domestic workers who lost contact with them shortly after they'd been abused. Imagine that last phone call they had with their mother, sister, or daughter when she had told them about the threats, the beatings, and even rape and then never hearing from her again. Those cases stayed with me. It's not just the horror of the abuse. The really hard part is knowing how little help there is for them. In 2013, I started working for Human Rights Watch. Since then, I've traveled to the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Kuwait, and Qatar, investigating and campaigning against the abuse of migrant domestic workers. I interviewed women like Kasturi, who experienced similar abuses. They spoke of being confined to their employer's home, finding themselves forced to sleep on the floor in storage or living rooms, regularly insulted and humiliated, beaten and sexually harassed and assaulted. But at least they live to tell their tales. Some die trying to escape. Others are murdered by their employers. So why is this abuse taking place? This is not an accident. 
Until recently, all Gulf states had excluded domestic workers from their labor laws. This meant that unlike other workers, domestic workers had no legal guarantees to limit their working hours or to even have a rest day. Even if they flee their employer's home, they can be arrested for absconding. This is because of the kafala system. Kafala means sponsorship in Arabic. And under this system, migrant workers' visas are tied to their employers. And they are not allowed to leave or change jobs without their employer's consent. Yet historically, the kafala system was actually about hospitality. The host in the Middle East would act as a sponsor for their guest and take full responsibility for them. But after the oil boom in the 70s, when Gulf states began to recruit millions of migrant workers, the kafala system soon became about control. Unscrupulous employers could exploit and abuse workers knowing that they had no choice but to put up with it. But change is in the winds. For more than 15 years, Human Rights Watch has exposed the abuse that domestic workers have faced and advocated for increased protections. Since 2012, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and in 2017, the UAE and Qatar all established legal protections for domestic workers' rights, such as a right to a weekly rest day and paid leave. Now, Oman remains the only Gulf Corporation Council country with no effective labor protections for domestic workers. But with our recent reporting, the pressure is on Oman to make reforms. Even the kafala system is undergoing some changes. Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Qatar now allow workers to change employers if there is a breach of their employment contract. In 2017, Saudi Arabia extended this to domestic workers in certain cases. Qatar may be beginning to dismantle its kafala system entirely. Late last year, after much advocacy, they committed to renewing residence permits with migrant workers directly rather than their employers. If Qatar goes on to lift all of the restrictions under the kafala system, then they could pave the way for the rest of the region to follow suit. These changes are credit to the courage shown by women like Kasturi, who spoke out about their abuse organizations and unions who champion domestic workers' rights, and countries like the Philippines who demanded better rights for their nationals. When countries stick up for their workers, we can win better labor protections. But they won't unless concerned citizens in their own country speak out. Historically, Indian domestic workers were some of the first to migrate to the Gulf, and yet, the Indian government is not the best in championing their workers' rights. India should increase protections for domestic workers before they leave, after they arrive in the Gulf, and when they return. For instance, India should lift its restrictions, like the ban of women aged 30 and under, from migrating as domestic workers. That's because, right now, they are migrating with informal agents, leaving them more vulnerable to abuse and trafficking. Indian embassies should also assist and shelter domestic workers when they face abuse. Unfortunately, India is moving away from a very important mechanism that they had established for domestic workers in recent years. Indian embassies had required employers to provide a refundable security deposit of around two to three thousand US dollars. This meant that the embassies could use the money to pay for return flight tickets home or unpaid salaries if the domestic worker fled to them following abuse. If everything went fine and she returned home safely with all of her salary, then the employer received his money back. But India is moving away from this system because they say that many employers found ways to bring workers into the country without them knowing. But this is a race to the bottom. India should keep this fairly effective mechanism and pursue ways to ensure all employers register their workers at the embassy. The demand for domestic workers by families in the Gulf continues to grow. 
So ask your government to do more to ensure that Indian domestic workers receive decent salaries and good working conditions. No one should have to risk their life or limb, like Kasturi did, to escape abuse. The next time you think of the Gulf, remember the invisible hands that built the cities. And remember the domestic workers who left behind their own families to look after other people's children and homes. They deserve to have their rights protected and to be treated with respect.